it's time to push my ultramarines aside and go for some blood angels from the leviathan box set so let's get painting so in this video i'll be painting up the later set from the leviathan box set we're going for the terminators the captain terminator armor as well and also a cheeky little dreadnought now i decided to go for blood angels because my friend had been pestering me about these and actually they do look pretty damned awesome in this video, I'll be making a fair few mistakes, so, you know, that's always entertaining. But in the end, I think the results are pretty damn good, at least in my opinion. So to get them started, I got them all assembled, glued together, and I've got to say, these push fit models are really, really nice. And in fairness to Games Workshop, you could probably do a fair bit of customization, because you just clip off the little bits there, and you can move the arms around if you want to. I then got them all primed up, and this is where I started to make my first mistakes. Basically, when I was priming them, I noticed that my airbrush wasn't behaving. And instead of taking it apart and giving a good clean, I decided I would power through it. This is a bit of a foreshadowing moment. So once I got all the black onto my Terminators, I then moved across onto this Army Painter Air Paint, the Chaotic Red. And I figured this was quite a nice paint to start off with. It's this really nice dark brownie red, which you can get into all the recesses. It means it'll have some of the black and then some of this really dark red in there just to help with all the shadows. Once... I had done that and I got it into all the places that I liked. I went in there with some white ink. In my head, this was going to work by getting some white ink all over it to give it a re over what I'd already done. And then I'd be able to go over with some red ink, which I'd recently bought. And I figured it would give this really nice, vibrant pop on the top and this really nice shadowy bit underneath. So going back to my foreshadowing moment, at this point, I got my white ink in there and things became a bit like a blizzard. My airbrush was not happy. I should have taken it apart to clean it. It started smattering all over. And then after a little bit of blizzard, it decided to give me the full load. And I got white all over my Terminators. Feeling a little disheartened, took my airbrush apart, gave it a good clean like a good boy, and I moved on to the red ink. And this is where I made my next mistake. <laughs> this red ink came out and it was incredibly vibrant. And I've got to say, I got it all over everything and I just didn't like the results. It just, I don't know, it was too much. It didn't have enough highs in there and it was just a really, really vibrant red, which looked lovely, but it also needed some more. I took my Blood Angels inside, looked at them for a little while and decided I need to go back to the drawing board. So I came back and I started again, but this time I figured I would go with the airbrush paints, the triad. So I went with the chaotic red pure red for the mids, and then this Archangel red for the highs. Did this all over all of my units, and then I was finally happy with that. Once the airbrush was aside, I grabbed my paintbrush and thinned down some Wild Rider red. I used this for just some of the edge highlighting and to add a little bit of pop onto my models, and then I moved across onto all the other colors and pushed my red aside. For things like the Aquila and the guns and anywhere that I wanted some black, I used Black Legion contrast paint. Now, I love this. It's just a really, really nice, consistent, easy to use black, and it's got fantastic coverage. Obviously, because of speed paint, it's already pre-thinned and ready to go from the bottle. And you do need to be really careful with basically every layer you're gonna do from this point on, because if you make any mistakes on your airbrush base coat, it's just gonna be a bit of a nuisance to try to clean up. So I got my black on there, and then it was across onto some of the metallics. So for all the metallics, parts of the gun, for example, anywhere that they had decorations on their power armor, I used Rune Fan Steel. And if any of them had any gold embellishments on there, I used Liberator Gold. This didn't take too long to get down, and I've gotten better at using metallics. I do thin them on my wet palette, which I know some people say don't do because it gets metallic flakes throughout the whole thing, but I found that it makes using metallics so much easier. I could just thin them on another palette, but I'm lazy, so there we go. Once I'd got all my metallics down and all the black parts of the armor that I wanted, it was moving on to just some of the little embellishments that they had all over. So anywhere they've got like the lights on the shoulders, for example, on the Dreadnought, it's got quite a few more lights as well. And then for all the eyes as well, I use Cable Light Green. I let that dry and then I went back in with a tiny little dot of white on all of these and just dotted them and it just gave it just a nice bit of reflection. I then mixed up some of the lights as well and I used Flash Gits Yellow to put some of them on there just to give it a little bit of a different color. Then it was on to the Null Oil stage. Normally I would go over to an oil wash, but I didn't want to mix up loads of it. And sometimes if you're working too quickly over an airbrush base coat without varnishing can cause some slight issues there. And I didn't want to risk it with these. So with this, I basically got anywhere where there's tiny little lines or anywhere where I wanted a little bit more shadow on the power armor and just dropped a bit of Null Oil in there. I didn't slosh it all over the model like I would normally do with something like an oil wash. And just having a bit more control over this helped me to get some, I guess, a little bit more contrast on the model and just maintain all those highs and brights that I'd already established early on in the journey. I also added onto all the metallics as well, just to add a little bit more depth. 
And then I grabbed some Agrax Earthshade and just sloshed that onto some of the areas. So anywhere that I had gold, I used a bit of Agrax Earthshade. And on parts of their weapons, I used some Agrax Earthshade as well. Now when it came to my captains for their power swords, I used the airbrush really early on just to establish some of that lighting. So I blasted some really bright blues and greens in there. And then basically once I'd got the sword done, I just aimed it at parts of the body where it would hit and then just a little bit of a squirt. Now you could do something similar. What I've done in the past is I will tend to just paint the sword white and then I'll go over with a speed paint or a contrast paint, like a really nice bright vivid one that I want. And then I will just dry brush in some of like the bits that I want that lighting to be hitting on. Once that was done, it was time to do the bases. So I just grabbed some of my ground texture from Vallejo, sloshed that on there and just used some Basilicarlum gray over the top of that with a tiny bit of a dry brush afterwards. And once that was done, I rimmed the bases black because of course, that's what you should always do. No arguing. And I called them done. Editing Sean here, and I almost forgot one of the worst parts of this. Um, I tried freehanding for the first time. I decided I was gonna freehand some Blood Angel symbols onto them. It didn't go well. It, like, <laughs> it was an attempt. I started off with black. And I figured I would do the, the outline of like the symbol all in black and then go over it with some white. I could not get it consistent. I could not get it central. And in the end, I just went back over it and painted over the whole like kneecap where I tried to put it on with black and just paint over my mistakes and move on. So yeah, I attempted, but figured I'd throw that in there just for a little bit of a giggle. And I've got to say, I'm really happy with these. And now I just want to paint up loads and loads of Blood Angels. I don't know if I'm more taken with them than I am with my Ultramarines, but that's just a whole load of nostalgia, which ties me to these. But I really like these. The red is surprisingly simple to do with an airbrush. And I know there'll be a lot of people out there who don't have an airbrush. If you are a miniature painter, I would suggest getting one as like your next tool. I know they can sometimes be a bit expensive because you've got to buy the compressor and an airbrush as well. But when it comes to being able to do some really fast paints in terms of getting a really nice base coat down there and just some nice effects as well, I've had such a blast using an airbrush. I think it's probably my most valuable painting tool that I own. And I would definitely recommend it if you've got the space and everything else. It means you can pretty much base coat in any weather as well. You don't have to worry about it being rainy or too humid or anything like that to use rattle cans. And over time, in my opinion anyway, it saves you money because you're not constantly having to buy rattle cans. You can just buy little bits of primer and use them there. So those are my Blood Angels. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And should I continue doing some more Blood Angels or should I go back to the Ultramarines? You guys let me know. I've got to say, I'm, I'm probably going to end up doing both because I'm just, I, I'm indecisive. I can't decide. So you guys need to decide for me. I really like these. Massive fan of these Blood Angels and very happy with how they came out. Got to say, these Leviathan Terminators are absolutely awesome. And I really like the Dreadnought as well. I wasn't taken with it at first, but once it's all painted up, oh, yeah, I like it. So uh, thanks for watching. Hope that's helped. If you've got any questions at all, throw them down in the comments below. If you want me to try a different type of painting guide on Blood Angel's armor with speed paints, for example, or just contrast paints and no airbrush, I could always try that as well. I'm always open to finding out what's the fastest way to get these painted. So I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye.